I'm excited to read this book to you today, Across the Alley by Richard Michelson. Hello, Diamond Valley friends and families. I'm excited to read this book to you today. I've been looking forward to it actually for a while. It's called Across the Alley by Richard Michelson. And I'm standing in front of our school's freedom wall for this video uh, because of what we learn in this book. So uh, let's get started. Every night after grandpa turns out the lights, I count to 20 before I tiptoe out of bed and tug open my shade. Across the alley, I know Willie's doing the same. During the day, we don't play together, but at night, when nobody's watching, Willie and I are best friends. Last winter, I watched his fingers spell out hi through the frost on the bedroom window. Hi. He wrote each letter backwards and then waved. I heard the ice cracking as I jimmy opened my pane. My daddy was a starter in the Negro Leagues, Willie told me, and he says someday I'm going to pitch in the majors. The next night, Willie showed me how to throw a real big league slider. He knew just where I should stretch my fingers across the stitches. When spring comes, I sit out on the stoop. Down the street, those other boys are always batting and having fun. I see a grounder run full steam through Willie's legs like a rat racing for the sewer. Then a pop-up drops out of Willie's glove. Now that it's summer, we open our windows wide and play catch. Most days, I'm Sandy Koufax, and he's Satchel Paige. Some days, we switch. Grandpa says Jewish kids shouldn't waste time with baseball. He thinks I should spend every minute practicing the violin. God gave you a brain, Abe, he says. Let those Negro boys play ball. After Grandpa gives me my lesson, I go to my room to practice. Willie leans out his window and asks if he can play. I tell him where to rest his chin on the chin rest and how much rosin to slide across the hairs of the bow. All summer long, I teach him everything I learned. Willie's as natural as satchel on the mound. His fingers fly up and down the fingerboard like the pavement's too hot to set your bare feet on the ground. You'll be the next Hasha Heifetz, Grandpa says proudly one night when he comes to turn out the light. I think you're ready for the recital at the temple next Tuesday afternoon. My palms turn sweaty, like I've been caught throwing a spitball. I want to tell him it was Willie, but I can't think of anything to say. Grandpa was a great violinist in the old country, I tell Willie late that night. But there was a war and the Nazis broke all of his fingers and worked him like a slave. Grandpa says he was lucky to escape with his life. Willie's real quiet now, and I wonder if I said something wrong. Maybe he doesn't know about the Nazis. My great granddaddy was a slave too, Willie finally says. I never knew any white folk that were. Then we're both real quiet until Willie decides that it's time we went to bed. And you can see them here, they're talking back and forth across the alley. All weekend, I stay in my room practicing. Willie tells his daddy he's sick so he can stay in his room too. I know Willie should be working on his windup. Tuesday, his daddy coaches baseball and Willie's penciled in to do the pitching. I take a break to practice my own windup, so I pass my violin out the window to Willie. Soon, my arm spinning like the Coney Island Ferris wheel and his bows kicking up so much breeze, there's not a single fly left to swat in the city. We're both working so hard, I don't even hear Grandpa open my door. There's Grandpa standing behind watching him. First, Grandpa looks at me and then at Willie. And then he turns back toward me one more time. I'm holding my breath real tight. You'll be the next Hasha Heifetz, Grandpa finally says, and then he shows Willie the correct position of his bow. 
It's Tuesday afternoon and we're walking side by side like best friends. And everybody's watching. Let people stare, Willie's daddy says as he steps ahead of Grandpa and into the temple. Ignorance comes in as many colors as talent. When Willie and his daddy sit down, most people get up and slide across the aisle. That opens up seats in front for Grandpa and me. Willie's first notes sound like the radio when I'm searching for the signal that announces the Dodgers games. But then Willie closes his eyes and you can tell by his face that he's found the right station. When Willie sits back down, the clapping is so loud you'd think he just walloped a homer. I tell Willie he sounded great, but he's already rushing me toward the door. In half an hour, Willie's daddy is leading us to the sandlot and I'm penciled in to do the pitching. I'm standing still, but my stomach feels like it's stuck riding the roller coaster. My first pitch flies over the batter's head. I stare down at my feet, but out of the corner of one eye, I see Grandpa standing between Willie and Willie's daddy. They're all cheering me on. I stretch my fingers just so across the stitches, and I spin my arm like the Coney Island Ferris wheel. My next pitch slides straight over home plate. And there you can see both families side by side clapping and cheering for each other. All right, I got a little emotional, everyone. But the reason I wanted to share this story is because of the principle and the message that it teaches us. And again, I'm standing in front of this Liberty story, this freedom wall that has pictures of our country's history. The reason that our country exists is because people came here for religious freedom and to be able to do what they want. There was a lot of war and a lot of fighting and a lot of battles to be able to protect the freedoms. And it's learning that we can coexist together in a country. It doesn't matter what race we are, what language we speak or what religion we are, but we all can respect each other for the talents that we have and the values that we have. And that's something that we learned across this alley that these two boys, they saw that difference and they became friends and they showed their families that they can be friends too. And I hope that at Diamond Valley, we're always friends to each other, no matter what our backgrounds are. And that's what I want to share with you today. Thank you. Mm -hmm.